Hello Stace Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou, and welcome back to my channel. In recent news, the moon is rusty and astronomers aren't so sure why, but they do have a hypothesis. In this week's video, I'm going to discuss just that. So let's begin. We all know what rust is. When iron metal is oxidized, the reaction between iron and oxygen in the presence of water will leave behind a reddish brown substance that gives Mars its characteristic red color. But hang on a second. If the reason that Mars is red is because it's rusting, then if the moon is also rusting, how come it's not red? Well, Although the moon seems to be brilliantly white, it's actually very slowly turning red, and it's all because it's getting rusty. Scientists have found evidence of Fe2O3 on the moon, two iron atoms and three oxygen atoms, also known as hematite, but maybe more familiar to you and I as rust. But how did it get there? The key to forming rust is iron, oxygen, and water none of which is on the moon, right? How can such a dry environment in the vacuum of space possibly rust? There is in actual fact iron on the moon. It makes up about 10% of the moon's composition. It's also not devoid of water either. Whilst liquid water cannot exist on the moon's surface, we know that ice water can survive on the surface of the cold, permanently shadowed craters, particularly at the moon's poles. So when scientists looked at the moon's poles for hematite, that's exactly what they saw. This is a map of hematite on the moon's poles, and from yellow to red color, these are increasing density of hematite. But lastly, we're still missing oxygen, and although the moon isn't actually in a vacuum, it has a very weak atmosphere that is composed of argon, helium, and neon, and unfortunately, no oxygen. Luckily though, that doesn't seem to matter because it turns out that oxygen is the most abundant element in the lunar soil, comprising nearly half of the lunar regolith by weight. So that's the three ingredients for rust sorted, iron, water, and oxygen. Unfortunately, this doesn't quite solve our problem because oxygen in the soil is chemically locked into the regolith, so it shouldn't be causing active rusting. And another thing, I said that water ice was found in the permanently shadowed craters, right? Then how come it's the rims of the craters that are bright with hematite and not the crater floors? One theory is that micrometeorites strike the moon on a regular basis. Their impacts could liberate water molecules on the surface while heating the surface enough to allow oxidation to occur when they do. So the problem with this is that it still doesn't explain why hematite exists mostly on the rims of the craters. carefully at the hematite, there's something else you might have noticed. The hematite exposure seems to only occur on one side of the moon, the side that faces the Earth. This makes way for another theory, that the oxygen and possibly even the water for oxidation has traveled over 240,000 miles from Earth carried by Earth's wind. Solar wind, wind from the sun, can hinder the process of oxidation, but during a full moon, when the moon is protected by the Earth's magnetic field, that's when rust can form. This also explains why we're only getting rust on one side and mostly on the crater rims. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. Let me know in the comments section below what you want me to talk about next time. And in the meanwhile, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe.